back those young ones who are being trained on technology for the future. Teach a child early and they will actually learn forever. Well, moving on now, in a country brimming with cultural vibrancy and natural resources, one would expect Nigerians to enthusiastically embrace locally made goods. Yet, despite the skyrocketing prices of imported products and the exit of multinational companies, many Nigerians still exhibit a strong preference for foreign-made items. The devaluation of the Nigerian Naira has significantly diminished the purchasing power of the average citizen. With inflation on the rise, the cost of living has become a major concern for the populace. Imported goods, once viewed as luxury items, have become even more expensive. However, they continue to dominate the shelves of supermarkets and markets across the country. Now, when it comes to food, despite the high cost of imported items, they are often perceived as being of superior quality. Now, many supermarkets uh, stock a greater proportion of foreign goods than local ones, partly due to consumer demand and partly because of the perceived inconsistency and the quality of domestic product. Uh, Mohammed uh, Mukta will talk to me about that in a minute. Now, international finance and economic analyst Mukta Mohammed joins me now in the conversation. Thanks for joining me, Mukta. Thank you for having me, Justin. My pleasure always. All right, before we talk about preference for foreign made goods, let's talk about Trump, the man of the moment. I saw a caption somewhere. It was um, put Trump season two. <laughs> Uh, that was a bit comical. But let's talk about um, the influence and of the impact, of course, um, his administration uh, would have on the economy of um, Africa. Uh, let's start with um, Nigeria. Uh, um, the Lagos Business Schools, uh, they had um, a breakfast meeting over the weekend, and um, um, Ms. Makuwani uh, and his team, uh, they seem to think that um, the coming uh, again of uh, President-elect Donald Trump uh, might not be so favorable for Nigeria in terms of uh, foreign exchange and, of course, uh, demand for dollar and all of that. What are your thoughts, Mukta? Well, a Trump economy, um, a Trump presidency is a strong dollar, definitely, because you need to look at the policy, policy of Donald Trump. He's American first, so he's more interested in American companies and how American companies can, um, can grow. Um, yeah, then, than them competing with foreign companies. So definitely, when you look at that, there, it, it will definitely have an impact on Nigeria because Nigerians don't you normally use most of made in American goods. We, uh, we use most, mostly, if you talk about cars, we use Japanese cars. But unfortunately, those Japanese cars come to America. They don't come directly from Japan. Mm. And especially when they are fairly used. And so definitely, they probably, if they treat tariff on those goods, goods high, the American that will buy it. So in terms of selling these cars to Nigeria, there you see these cars will become more expensive because of the high tariff that will come from uh, Donald Trump. Um, Donald Trump also does not favor um, higher oil price. That will have a very big impact on us. You know, um, foreign reserve is likely driven by oil because he, put, he, he, he normally favor low oil price. And how does he do this? He makes sure that in the U.S. Um, are pumping their reserve into the into their own economy then by reducing the cost of uh, um, um, of gas in in America. So definitely that will not help us. Um, going forward and, and trump also does not look at um it as a means of uh, helping he always look at what are you bringing to the table if you are you have it then mm. what favor does it bring for us as, as a country so uh, if you look at that you you, you can but agree that um, a strong economy is a stronger dollar because even dollars to the pound dollar to the yen you, you are seeing that uh, the dollar is very strong because of the coming of donald trump uh, but again, we also have to look at um, the positivity in that also. Uh, it could be a game changer for Africa to look inwardly. Yeah. It could also be a game changer for Africa that um, Donald Trump might not be able to ignore Africa, knowing that um, Russia and the, and China are also looking at Africa as a strategic partner. America might not just be able to afford not to look at the side of Africa. Yeah. But um, the good thing about a Donald Trump presidency um, will also help um, create um, a competitive environment for African companies they are seeing with foreign companies. That will also be a game changer. So, but if you look at it in the long run, or based on what Trump did in the first term, you realize that he's more of American first than any other uh, 
any other country. And if you remember his first ten, I can't I can't remember Donald Trump visiting any African country. Mm -hmm. I stand to be corrected in his four years of his first four years in presidency. Mm -hmm. I can't remember him visiting any African country. All right. Uh, before we talk about some uh, specific aspect in, in terms of um, immigration, let's talk about um, how um, the South um, 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 Asian um, countries, or maybe let's speak directly, really. There's this rivalry between the United States and China, you know, and um, Trump seems to be at the forefront of all of that. But with all of that, with um, Nigeria and most part of Africa, you know, you know, having preference for, for goods, uh, you know, made from Asia, you know, what would this, you know, really impact in terms of um, uh, how um, trade will be done in this particular aspect of um, uh, the, the world, that's Africa, really? Well, um, another thing you need to look at again is um, um, why is there a trade war between America and China? Because um, they think China, Chinese goods are cheaper than American goods, and when it gets to the American um, economy, then it's uh, most American prefer the Chinese goods to, to, to the American goods. Now, why do we see that? I think it's driven largely by cost of labor. Most American companies have their base in China. Um, if you talk about the biggest of biggest of American companies, you talk about um, Apple, most of their base in China. You talk about Google, also most of their product comes from China. But why? Because of cheaper labor. So he's thinking that by putting high tariff on those goods, this American company will be forced to do production in America because that means that producing in America will be cheaper than producing in China because the whole idea why they produce in China is because of the cheap labor they get from China. That is one. But again, you must also know that um, because of the volume of trade that China does with the world and also does with America, it gives them a strategic advantage. And that is why when the trade war will start, uh, tariff, then America and uh, Chinese normally just devalue their currency. By devaluing their currency, they make the cost of their goods cheaper than that of America. And mm -hmm. before then, you see the American government running to China to let's have a talk. So in spite of all the trade war, in spite of all the trade talk, uh, during Donald Trump's um, first time in office, I think he visited China about twice. That's to tell you that he knows that uh, the American economy cannot survive without the Chinese, just like he thinks the Chinese also cannot survive without the American. But if you look at the Chinese, I think they are trying to build strategic partner with most countries, especially in the Middle East, they are entering into the European nation that they are dealing with China, and also they are dealing with Africa. Chinese presence in Africa is huge. And if you go by world economic projection, Africa is the next big thing. So um, definitely, yes, there could be a war, but um, it's, it's, it's um, normally going to be to the advantage of China in the long run because of their cost of um, labor and also because of the volume of trade they do, because of the large companies that are stationed in, Amer in um, American companies that do their business for China, from China. Okay, let's talk about immigration uh, and, of course, um, you know, alignment with um, other countries and everything. You know, Nigeria has not been aligned in geopolitical terms. It has not really benefited from um, trade flows, but has gained from international banking credit. You know, looking at... Um, you know, diaspora remittances and, uh, you know, Trump's um, stand on immigration. Uh, how do you see uh, that impacting on um, forex flows for Nigeria? Um, just it's going to be huge. It's going to be very huge. And if you remember of recent, the CBN is trying to do what they call a dollar denominated uh, uh, oh. diaspora funds, yeah. which will come in, in dollars. I, I think that is going to be very, very huge for the Nigerian economy if that happens. And, and that is one of his driving policy to reduce illegal Im immigrants in the country. And sometimes also, sometimes people think illegal immigrant has just only to do that by those that get into America um, illegally. But sometimes again, illegal immigrant can also be those that have declared refugee. They are waiting for clearance. Some of these people could be just be declared that it's illegal and they have to leave. And so this also have an effect on our our uh, inflow. Like I say, foreign direct investment to Nigeria, I mean, foreign portfolio investment, for, especially for Nigeria, for the diaspora, mm. is a game changer that we are looking towards to stabilize our currency. So that would be a very big one to the Nigerian economy if that uh, this uh, policy comes on string. But I, I, I think, again, also it could cause for us to look inwardly because a Trump presidency means that the Jackman syndrome might reduce. And when the jackass video reduce also, it has also has its positive and its negative. 
You mustn't also forget that um, immigration also is strong in Canada now. It's not going to be the same. It's also oh. a driving point towards their current electoral campaign. So all this adding on, it will be negative for Africa and especially for Nigeria. Because if you look at um, the number of Nigerians that were granted permit based green card in America as far last year was one of the highest in Africa. So definitely, um, if Trump comes up with his immigration policy, as he plans to do, it will definitely have an impact, especially in our exchange rate, where we are depending on diaspora remittance to stabilize the rate. All right, let's talk about um, debt servicing, for instance. Uh, from what uh, we understand, um, our total external debt obligation stands at um, approximately $112.3 billion. With this latest development, do you think um, that uh, servicing our debts uh, would be more expensive? And uh, what also, what other impact would it also have in terms of our fiscal policy? Are we seeing um, a regime of higher interest rates um, very soon? We're already seeing that, and um, again, going to a Trump presidency, Trump presidency favor cutting interest rate. He prefer lower interest rates. So what it means is that um, uh, most Americans will be doing business in America, it will be cheaper for funding in America, but it will have its own um, impact. It could also lead to some of them coming to places that have high interest rate like Nigeria. So that's why I would totally agree that it could also lead to high interest rate from Nigeria to attract inflow from the diaspora, I mean, from, from the diaspora for foreign investors because of the low rates in America. So that will have its advantage, but its impact, like you said, will also affect local businesses. Like, mm -hmm. But you already know that it's already affecting local businesses mm -hmm. with the high interest rate. Mm -hmm. So that I, I don't see anything that will be done that will be new from what we have seen. But again, the only challenge will be if that immigration policy comes out and it has the light of the day, that may we have to put more high high interest rate to attract more of them because that diaspora remittance will not be enough to stabilize our rate. So definitely uh, it, it will have an impact in terms of inflow, in terms of foreign investors. It could be also drive uh, uh, most foreign investors into that. But in terms of debt servicing, oh. a stronger dollar is not good for us because that means um, the dollar, the, the exchange rate will be higher which we already experienced in about getting it further also. Okay. We increase our budget deficits and also we increase our debt servicing, which the president, current administration, have priced it to, to have brought it to about 60, 65 to, I mean, 65 percent compared to 98 percent before then. Oh. A stronger dollar might be driving us back to that high, high debt right. servicing uh, regime. All right, uh, before we leave uh, the Trump's administration, we're supposed to be talking about Africa generally, but we have spent um, so much time talking about um, Nigeria. But uh, just uh, as we round off this particular aspect of the conversation, in general terms, on, um, on Africa generally as a continent, what uh, would be the major impact in terms of um, trade aid and otherwise? For aid, we'll see a reduction in aid, especially family support aid that has to do with reproductive, um, 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 uh, reproductive health. Maybe plan for um, most of these um, um, companies that support reproductive health will not see those kind of um, aid again coming. And this also will also lead to a reduction in terms of their workforce in Africa. Um, a term presidency, like I said, also will, 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 not, will not so much favor um, trade, and that will affect the Afri African continental growth or, or a goal policy that we have with the United States that is supposed to be renewed sometime. In, in some, it's supposed to be renewed, and that could also not see the light of day unless um, renewed in September 2025. So hopefully that might be renewed, or that might not be renewed, or we could even see a suspension of that when it comes to power in January. So definitely that yeah. is going to have huge impact on Africa in terms of trade. And like I said, trade um, strong support a very high headers net policy in terms of trade. And so they could also see a reduction in trade, even the, with the little that we do. If not uh, in Africa, most uh, uh, most of the things that the United States are benefiting from African countries are mostly Africans in yeah. the diaspora. And so when you see a reduction in the numbers of Africa in the diaspora, that also you see a reduction because of the immigration policy. You could see a reduction in terms of goods from Africa going into these countries. So uh, definitely a Trump presidency will have its own effect. But I, I stay positive if you look at his first term. Um, there were more inflow to Africa during his first term that, than it was during the Joe Biden time. In terms of uh, military assistance, there were more military assistance, especially for Nigeria, 
Remember, before he came, Barack Obama refused to sell the fighters jet to Nigeria. Immediately, Trump came. Right. He approved that because Trump is a really businessman. He looks at the deal. If the deal favored an American and he goes for it, he's not looking at the political side of it. So hopefully, we'll see some of those deals come through. We could also see him looking at, oh, look, we can't ignore Africa this time around. Hopefully, that's my, that's my, that's my hope. All right, uh, uh, just before we go, let's talk about two other major items. Let's look at the nation's, Nigeria's economy specifically. Uh, let's start with um, VAT. There's been ongoing concern uh, concerning um, the VAT collection uh, between the state or the federal government. I know there is uh, some case in the Supreme Court, but in your opinion now, where should it actually be channeled? Who should, they, who should be doing the collection of VAT, state or the federal government? I think I'm 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 concerned with what the um, chairman of it, the presidential tax form on um, uh, on tax reform is saying. Uh, I, like I said, I said that was this, that is the most um, vibrant economic policy of the current administration. But with the statement that says that states are uh, we kill business if states start collecting VAT, I think I tend to disagree. Uh, we we always look for a political solution to everything that we have, and that's why we are where we are. And I'm I'm happy I look to that when he was saying that uh, if the case in by River State and uh, and and, and uh, Lagos State has proceed to the Supreme Court based on the Constitution, I think they would have won and wouldn't have had all this drama that we are having now. Mm. For me, when you talk about value added tax, you are talking about the addition in terms of value mm -hmm. that the 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 the, 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 the police. Where the business is situation is situated, what are these val what are those additions that place have added to it? That's why they enjoy the value added tax. Because in a situation whereby you are striving to make business um, strive in your state, you are investing in infrastructure, you are investing in manpower, you are investing in uh, a lot of things because you have the population, and then you have to de 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 share this vibe with a state that is virtually doing nothing. Then you look at some states that say this this particular goods it's 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 not allowed into their state and this good also bring a lot of value to the federal government we have to share inquiry so what value are they adding so in a in a developed economy if you want to copy it in the value added start normally go to the state whereby this business are, are, are if you go to the united states you go to the uk that's what is thing so i don't think Nigeria should be a different even if we have to be a different yes I agree in terms of international trade, which he is concerned about. That also could be tackled because the sea, when you look at international trade, all the seaports are in Lagos, and these were built by federal. So we could look at that as another area whereby, okay, if right. it's for foreign goods, foreign then we can't be saying, okay, we could share it equally. But when it talks about a company in Nigeria, a company in a Nigerian company that is situated in a particular state that most of its customers in that state and that put pressure on the infrastructure of that state think value added tax should go to that state. All right, well said. And finally, preference for uh, foreign-made goods. And um, I don't know if people still do that with um, the whole um, economic um, situation right now. But then um, we hear that um, a report says that um, made in Nigeria products are practically struggling, you know, vis-a-vis -vis standing side by side with um, foreign-made goods. What are your thoughts as we close? Um, Justin, I'm sure the tie that you are putting is foreign. The, 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 yeah. so, <laughs> so it's 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 uh, the the wristwatch we are wearing is foreign, and so some of these things it's not because they cannot be produced here. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's not because they cannot be produced here, but it's basically mm. the, the quality, like you said, the quality quality is is, is key. Um, but in terms of fiber uh, fiber uh, fabric, I think. Uh, of recent, we have seen a lot of uh, Nigerians making use of our own shoes and um, wearing our own fabrics and all that because to reduce cost. That has had a positive impact. Uh, but in terms of um, quality, I think the challenge is quality. And that quality, again, is driven because of cost of production, which we have always said there's no infrastructure. So it seems to be that the foreign goods are more cheaper than the Nigerian goods. And in terms of economic challenges that we are going through now, you prefer to buy the cheaper good. Mm. You are not even looking at quality. You are looking at availability of funds, what you can afford now. So if you look at the Nigerian goods, it's more expensive. If you look at the foreign goods, it's cheaper. So definitely, scale of preference and the foreign goods now more better. You go for it. I think the challenge is that we've not been able to 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 see how we can make our goods competitive. Remember, there was a time whereby uh, when they, they said uh, uh, Taiwan, they would say, "Oh, that good is from Taiwan. Oh, mm -hmm. that good is from China." 
Yeah. But they went about and they have improved their quality. We know more here people talking, oh, this is Taiwan. They will say, oh, Taiwan has good quality. I think that is what we should be doing as a nation to see how we can improve in terms of our quality of our made in Nigerian goods. And this cannot be done only by them. They need the support of government. And that is why with small and medium scale enterprises that have been established since the president, mm -hmm. since the first time of President Olusegun Obasanjo, those are sectors that we need to begin to look at how we can help, help those sectors can help small businesses, not just playing lip service and putting up political politicians as the head of the group. We need to put a real business person to head that mm -hmm. sector that knows what businesses need to strive and then we can begin to see the cost of production come down with true government support that will help bring down the cost and that could also make more nigerians to buy and also enlightenment we have to come also it's All a right. mindset but we have this mindset that um, nigerian goods are low in quality and so sometimes we don't even give them the opportunity i right, thank you Mokta. but for what is worth just for context how are you sure this was not made in naba and this one's uh, actually made here in nigeria <laughs> so i also thank you for correcting me so you are you are those that are patronizing made in Nigerian good, but that cannot be said with most of us. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm presently wearing a wristwatch that is, is not made in Nigeria. Aha. So, <laughs> so we could that's all, we could always say that you also wear. I, I'm sure the shirt that you are wearing, but because maybe the shirt I'm wearing also is not made in Nigeria, but I'm sure the shirt you are made wearing okay, is not made in Nigeria. Okay, beauty has charged. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mukta. <laughs> That's as much as we can take. Mukta Mohammed, International Finance and Economic Analyst. Many thanks for your time, as always. We do appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Justin. Do have a pleasant week. Yeah, you too. Well, that's the size of the show for today. Please patronize Made in Nigeria. Let us grow our own economy. And of course, uh, let's just have some sense of um, belonging and acceptance of our own product. My name is Justin Akadonia. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.